Hello everybody, uh, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me yet again. Uh, my name is Danielle, just in case you didn't know, and now you do. Uh, this week's video is going to be a little serious, a little funny. Um, we're going to talk about like five everyday struggles that uh, fat people and fat women in general um, go through. Uh, just in their everyday life that people don't think of uh, and just we don't openly talk about a lot. Um, before we get into it though, I'd like to ask you to subscribe. You don't have to if you don't want to, but uh, we're growing around here and I just want to make sure you see my videos every week um, and we've got lots of great co things coming, so um, subscribe. Alright, let's get into it. So the first struggle that sort of, well, I struggle with a lot, and I'm sure I'm not alone, is thinking, will it fit? Now, get your mind out of the gutter, because that's not what I'm talking about. I'm thinking like purse straps. So I favor crossbody bags. When I go to buy them, I have to try on every goddamn one in the whole store to make sure the strap is long enough because I have bought purses where I've like made the strap as long as I possibly could and it still didn't fit and I ended up with a purse up under my armpit where it's not comfortable to wear. Um, another thing is like thinking will that seatbelt go around me? Will I need to get a seatbelt extender? Uh, you know things like that that you're like, will that thing fit? Um, shoes, you know, like shoes are next on my list. Always having to worry about having wide feet and then wide calves on top of it. So like you have to search for wide calf boots. You have to pay more money for those boots. If you have wide feet, but they're small, it may be harder for you to find shoes. If you have very large feet, like I have size 12 feet, and there is not very many styles of shoes that come in wide. They range from ugly to like, hell no, that's never going on my feet ugly. And so I just resort to buying men's shoes because they're already wider fit. But that means that I get stuck with sneakers because they're the only thing that's comfortable. Because if you buy dress shoes in men's for a woman's foot, they're not made quite the same and they have no cushion and they just hurt. So, struggles. Alright, since we've already covered number two as well, um, number three is chairs. Um, chairs are a struggle all the freaking time. Um, for example, earlier this week I went out to a business dinner at a like brewery slash restaurant and the chairs were those hipster metal ones that kind of look like they don't cost a lot of money because they look like they're made from old tractor parts, but they do. And they had these like arm things on them. And my butt did not fit in that chair. Like I sat for two hours on the first four inches of the chair because my butt couldn't even squish. Like the bones were wider than the seat of the chair and I spent two hours at that dinner being totally engaged in the dinner the entire time thinking my butt hurts so much right now I just want to go and like check for bruises and I've had bruises from chairs before um other seating where you look at the chair and you're like is that an antique because like it looks pretty delicate and I don't want to crush it with my butt um, there have been places where I've looked at the chair and been like, I'll stand, you know, like I will legitimately just break that chair. Um, and like nobody wants to go through the embarrassment of breaking a chair. And I'm sure people will say, well, you could just not be fat and then you wouldn't break a chair. Well, here's the thing. Um, at the point where you're like already fat, it's not like you can like, oh, I'm not fat anymore. I'll take off my fat suit, thanks. Um, no, like, when you're about to sit on the chair, it's already too late. You're already fat, and you can't change that in that second. You just have to deal with it and adapt. 
I also struggle with bar stools, mostly because they either don't have a rung or they're super slippery to sit on. And like, I'm tall, but like average tall, so I'm like 5'9". And I just, like, gravity is not kind to you on a bar stool. Like, if the seat is smaller than your butt, your butt hangs over and just like gravity pulls it down and it hurts after a while, or you like slide off the front if you're in the wrong kind of pants. Anyway, I'm sure the pants thing is not a struggle that only fat people have. I'm sure that's everybody, but whatever. Also, watching a fat person get on a bar stool is always comical, even to me, so um, you know, anyway. Another chair that I always struggle with is concert seats. I paid a lot of money to sit in that seat and I'm gonna be in pain for the whole three hour concert or theater experience or whatever. I'm also tall so like I have no knee room, like no leg room and no butt room. Uh, like I don't go to hockey games which are like a thing around here um, cause we have an OHL team so like I don't go to hockey games. I don't go to concerts a lot of times. Sometimes I even dream about like going and sitting in the bar the whole time. I don't drink, but I'll sit in the bar because they have the lesser of two evils and that's a bar stool. So, um, same view and everything, but like, hurts less. Number four is mattresses and beds. I swear to you, beds and like bed frames are not made to hold a fat person. I'm sure they're like weight tested in things, but they don't tell you the weight test or like the weight limit when you buy it. So if you're already like 300 pounds or more, which I'm definitely over 300 pounds, I'm not telling you my weight, but like I'm over 300 pounds. And then you have a partner who sleeps in the bed with you who might also be big, um, and you add that up, it just means that your bed is like creaking and groaning and one time I had a bed where like I had it a week and it broke because it was so poorly made even though I asked them in the store I said like will that bed hold me and I laid on the bed it didn't feel bad they must have like bolted that shit together because it did not feel like it was gonna fall apart and it looked really awesome and was a really good price but like it still broke they took it back because that was totally their fault but it was awful. And it's embarrassing, too, to say, like, oh, I broke my bed. You know, nobody wants to say that. And then mattresses. Mattresses are weight tested as well. And the warranty, like, when they say there's a 10-year or 25-year warranty on a mattress, they're saying up to a certain weight there is that warranty. When you are over that weight or the combined people in the bed are over that weight, you void the warranty. So if it wears out before that time, you don't get another one on under the warranty. I know there are mattress companies out there now that some of them make beds specifically for fat people, which is great. But this mattress came out after I just bought my brand new mattress two years ago. And my brand new mattress that I got only two years ago and my bed that I got only two years ago are already showing signs of like deterioration from me being fat and sleeping in it. All I do is sleep and sit in it. Like, you know, it shouldn't be that tough, but it is. And I can already tell that this bed is not gonna last me as long as I would like it to, and my mattress is not going to last as long as I would like it to. But that is a struggle of a fat person. Number five is small spaces and crowded places. I did not mean for that to rhyme, I'm sorry. So like in a small space, let's say an elevator, right? When it says, oh, capacity is 16 persons. Okay, uh, but I am the size of two people or maybe three people. Um, if you know, you're thinking real small people. Um, so like suddenly that's, you know, not taken into account. And then when a crowded elevator comes and stops, and they're like, oh yeah, there's totally room for you in here. And you're like, uh, no, where? Where do you expect me to hide? In your pocket? Like, I'm not fitting in there. Like, and, you know, a lot of times people are kind of offended when, like, a fat people rub, fat person rubs up on them. Like, how, you know, they might catch fat, being fat. Um, but, like, they don't want to be crowded up to you either. I don't want to be crowded up to somebody. Like, I enjoy my personal space. 
I don't like being hugged, I don't like people in my space, and I don't want to be stuffed in a crowded ele elevator just to prove that, like, I can be like everybody else. I'm not like everybody else, I'm much fatter than everybody else, and I deal with it accordingly. The other thing is crowded places. Crowded places drive me insane. So, oftentimes, if you're like out at a bar or something and you're, it's like super crowded and you're like, excuse me, and somebody like moves, they move like this much, and you're like, hey, listen, like I'm fat, you need to move more. Or, all the tables in a restaurant are placed certain ways, so like there's space to walk between. There's space for a regular sized person to walk between. There is not space for my fat ass to walk between. Because when I shuffle through there, my butt's gonna rub on the back of someone's head. And my belly's gonna rub on the back of someone's head. Like, there's no winning this, and it's very frustrating because it also means that there's no accessibility for anybody else who maybe have mobility issues. But like, I don't want to rub my butt on someone's head. Simple as that. I also don't want to have to be like, oh, don't worry about it, I'm squishy, which is my typical line. Like, I do fit in a lot smaller spaces, or like, I can squish through places if I need to, but I shouldn't have to. People should be like, oh, that person's fat, I'll move over a little more. Um, you know, otherwise I just like stick my elbows out and just like ram through because then they get the hint real quick that they need to move more. Number six is a bonus. I uh, didn't say it when I introduced this, but I have a bonus. Uh, and this is the most serious one because in all honesty, this is the one that disappoints me the most. So as a fat person, I am often not taken seriously about things. So when um, when I was growing up, I was told a lot, or like I would see things on TV that basically said, fat people are not serious people. Fat people are there to entertain you, and be funny, and be the comedic relief, because no one will like them otherwise. Like, how awful is that to know and hear growing up? And I sort of accommodated that. I feel like I am uh, like a, a funnier person um, because it allows me to like break the ice. I'm sarcastic. I'm very open and honest about like being fat too. So like I can be sarcastic about those things as well. Um, but when you go for a job interview or I like I wanted to work in fashion. I went to fashion school. I was the only fat person in my entire class, okay? Um, and when I would go for interviews, when I would show up to volunteer at Fashion Week, I was the only fat person. And oftentimes, even models would tell me that I'm the one who worked the hardest because I had something to prove. Uh, designers would tell me that, like, they were happy I was there and I would have discussions with people over, like, oh, you know, it would be so nice if this came in my size, and they're like, yeah, yeah, that would be nice, like, down the road maybe. No, no, it, like, it's never gonna happen. No one in fashion would take me seriously when I was trying to get a job in a straight size, like, company that didn't make anything in my size. And like, God forbid I apply to a retail job where I can't wear the clothes because they won't even bother hiring you. They just, like, won't even look at you. Well, they don't look at me anyway. Then, you kind of have to look around and think, like, do you see a lot of overweight, fat bosses? Like, no. You see the fat people in the corner with their head down, doing their job, working hard, but not being recognized for it. And that makes me really angry. That really makes me feel like, you know, we're doing something wrong. You can be fat and be a boss and be taken seriously and give orders and be a good leader. You don't have to be super healthy. You don't have to be skinny. You don't have to work out every day. Like, you can be a boss and still be overweight. You can be a boss and have other mental health things going on. You can be a boss and not be that stereotypical asshole that everybody thinks of. And 
I really hope that we can change that in the future where when you think of a boss, you picture yourself exactly how you are. Anyway, that's all I've got for you this week. I know it took a little serious turn at the end, but for the most part, this was meant to be lighthearted and entertaining. I do try to take my fatness with a grain of salt and just sort of understand that like, yes, I could be not fat if I tr tried really hard and worked at it, but that's not something that I necessarily want. And so I live with a lot of these struggles every day, and I'm sure other people are living with them too. So if you are and you have some fun stories for us, share them in the comments. I want to hear them. And uh, if you're not, maybe you'll learn something in how to be a little more understanding with people. Um, like, it, I just, I just want to educate people, basically. That's it. Um, thank you so much for watching and sticking around to the end. I know it's probably going to be a long video. Um, if you would like to subscribe after watching that awesomeness, uh, please go ahead and subscribe. Find me on social media. All my links are in the description box. And I will see you guys next week. Bye!